Hey you, welcome to the 4G Experience. My name is George and I'll be showing you how I transplant my uh, tomato plants and whose method I'm using in this transplant series. But first I want to show you my compost. Uh, in my past video I mentioned that my compost wasn't uh, the best quality and the research I've uh, continued to do, it's not. So I'm gonna show you what I've been doing to try to get me the best quality out of what I got. So, as you can see here, I got a wire mesh here. I'm gonna put just one shovel full of this compost. Now this is supposedly finished compost from what I bought from the nursery, so we're just gonna see how finished it is. Okay, it is. Now what I noticed with this compost was it had a lot of wood chips in it. And from continuing research that the wood chips as they're decomposing in the ground, they rot the nitrogen, uh, the nitrogen out of the ground. So we're gonna try and take the wood chips out of the equation and try to get some better looking compost. Little shit here. Now look at that. Now that was just one shovel full of compost. So that can't be good. So I decided to go ahead and screen it out and use this for another project which I'll do a video about uh, in a different video but um, I'm mostly going to use it around my banana trees around the fruit trees and everything for good uh, water retention and this is what I get afterwards now that looks a whole lot better don't it look at that now I'm not going to taste this because I don't know where it's been if it was from my pile, I probably would. But I'm gonna skip on this one. <laughs> but anyways, uh, back over here, I have uh, already a mix uh, did up for us, just for my transplanting. And what it is is, uh, I did the same thing with the garden mix soil that I told y'all about. I ran it through the screen, took all the big wood chips and rocks out of there, and this is what I ended up with. So, looks pretty fluffy. Looks pretty healthy. And I feel a whole lot better now using this than uh, having on them wood chips in there. So, all right, let's see what we got. First things first, I have a small Juliet plant here in our little famous uh, red solo cups. Just, I drill a couple holes on the bottom and it seems to be working just fine. Let's see this, check the root system out. See that? This is perfect timing for transplanting. So what I'm going to do here... Oh, a little windy so I hope uh, you can hear me pretty good. Just put a little bit on the bottom. Back that down tight. I'll set this right in the middle. Try to get it a little lower. And what we're doing here, we're going to just uh, pan it deep. Uh, I'm using uh, Ray over at the Practice 55712 channel. If you haven't checked out his videos, I really recommend that you do. The guy has a lot of knowledge and great stories that he can share with you. So go check him out. Now the deal is we're going to plant this deep. So the roots will start growing out of the stem. We're not really uh, worried about the roots having much dirt on the bottom. We just want something to sit on because we're promoting the growth of the roots from the stem itself. When I'm, other than my uh, raised bed garden, I'm gonna go ahead and do a container garden. Uh, as, you, as you're gonna see, transfer from one of these cups to one of these pots. And they'll, of course, go into larger pots. And we have a lot larger pots over there, so if they need more space than that, then I'll be willing to accommodate them. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do is what Ray did actually uh, he had one tomato plant growing in a three by three raised bed and he had this huge monstrosity of a tomato plant I believe it was the practice cherry tomato that he was growing in there I'm not quite sure uh, if I'm wrong please uh, leave a comment and let me know what kind it was but what I'm growing here are Juliet's Romas and some beefsteak so uh, I'm gonna try to do that and if I have to 
I'll get one of them big 45 gallon pots and and see how big I can get my tomato plants. So let's finish this one off. And you see, I just pack it down just a little bit, not too tight. I do this here to get the air pockets out of the pot. And that's it, there's one. I'm gonna do a little larger one. This one here is a Roma. So, mark your tomato plants. Mark your pots, put a, a piece of tape on there, mark it on that, you know, put a little popsicle stick. I mean, I really don't care how you do it, just remember to do it. Because I have a lot, and here's a good example. There's no name on this one. Now, I know it's a tomato plant, and you know it's a tomato plant. It's not a very good looking tomato plant, but it's a tomato plant, so. <laughs> but either way, I don't know what kind what kind it is. So it could be one of three. It could be a cherry tomato, it could be a, uh, a what? A Julia tomato, a Roma, or a beef steak. So, oh, that wind is blowing, ain't it? Look, remember to mark your pots. However way you do it, you know, just remember to do it. So, this is the Juliet, and that's number one. Now here, we have a Roma. A lot larger. Now, I trimmed the bottom leaves off, so, so most of the energy will go into the roots and the top leaves. And I did that for a reason. And it seems to work. Look at that root system. Looks pretty. Very nice healthy root system. So it's ready to go into this larger pot here. Which I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna add a little bit on the bottom. And a little bit on the bottom, pack it down. And that's just so the dirt won't just keep falling out of the holes in the bottom. I, I definitely won't do that with the rest of the dirt on top. And look how deep that is. That looks good, don't it? Pretty good. All right, let's fill it up with dirt. Now I have roughly maybe 40 something plants that I'm gonna uh, use for my uh, container garden. Uh, we have plenty of pepper plants, tomato plants. Got a, actually I got a couple fig trees, which uh, those are eventually going to the ground. <clears throat> Get that in there. Just a little compaction, not too much. Well, these take a lot of dirt, so I hope you have plenty ready. Takes quite a bit of dirt to transplant these. transplant tomato plants using Ray's method over at the practice uh, 55712 channel like I said go check them out and look what I got over here this is just a little a little surprise right here can you tell what those are well they're probably a little too small to tell but they're subtropical I don't have any of these growing here they grow they could be considered a tree, but I'm not gonna tell you just yet. That's, that's for a different video. And if you wanna take a guess, take a guess. Uh, honestly, don't, let's see. What can I give to the first person that guesses right? Well, I really don't have anything. So, but if you wanna join in the fun, take a guess. It's subtropical, it grows as a, like a tree. I don't have any of these planted here. <clears throat> But it is a fruit. So take a look at that, take a guess, and uh, leave me a comment on the bottom. And I'll announce the winner of uh, being the first one to guess it right. <laughs> all right, well, that's all I'm gonna puffer right now. Uh, but I have been pretty busy. 
If you want to come around uh, the other side over here of the uh, compost bins, then I'll show you what I've been doing the rest of the morning. So, as you can see, I've been pretty busy. I've been transplanting most of the morning, transplanted all day. I saved a few of them just for uh, so I can show you what I was doing. We have plenty of tomato plants. Uh, I'm not really going to count them right now, but plenty of tomato plants. Yeah, they could look healthier, but during the hardening process, I don't know if I did something wrong or not, but they started yellowing up at the bottom. But if you see the top, the tops are getting pretty nice and green. Now I planted, I hardened them all off the same way. So as you can see over here, I mean they're doing just fine. Maybe they're just going through a little shock process or something, but uh, they're doing just fine. And as you can see, the wind is really, really putting a toll on them. I think, and yeah, they'll be just fine. You know, the strongest survives, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> I also have uh, some marigolds here. Now I planted three through a pot for most of them. Uh, John Kohler at GrowingYourGreens.com says that the blooms are edible. So I'm kind of excited to see what that tastes like. Which I'm not that excited, I think. I, I just don't eat flowers, but hey, I'll try it. <laughs> so these I'm not going to plant into the garden. Uh, I'd rather leave my square, uh, my raised bed garden vegetables but I will transplant these one more time into a larger pot and I'll just set them uh, spread them out around the garden I guess wherever they're needed I hear they're good for uh, bugs I guess I don't know if these are sacrificial plants or if they actually do keep the bugs away from the tomato plants so either way a couple of little uh, other plants we've got the banana trees back there which I've already seen we got a couple of uh, fig tree cuttings here um, actually, I got six fig tree cuttings that I just started two weeks ago, and as you can see, it's already leafing out. Now, I cut all the leaves off the, uh, the cuttings when I did plant them, so uh, hopefully this is telling me that it's starting to root down there and it likes where it's at. Okay, let's see, here's one of the uh, cuttings that I did this uh, past fall and during the winter. As you can see, he, he done rooted up pretty good. He's He's looking nice. Wonder if we got any baby figs on here yet. Nope, not yet. Well, hopefully this season we'll get some. If not, then that's fine. What I really wanted to do is uh, grow a nice good root system. So, either way, there it is. Here's a quick video. Thank you for joining us again. Until next time. That's it.